through the session. It's always a good one to be after lunch. Um, to introduce myself, I'm Brunel Fotenauer from Sunlam. I'm Pranush Lee Govinder, also from Sunlam. So just to give a little bit of context before we go into the presentation. So we've heard a lot during the conference around how to make your data available. So therefore, that whole big word that they couldn't pronounce this morning is what we're going to showcase for you today around specifically what we are doing around making data available to our line managers, to our employees, to be able to make informed decisions. Now, within the human capital environment, you know that that is one of the biggest things that people want. They want to see that data. They want to see that data in real time, and they want to see that data so that they can make decisions. Just before, again, we start, is to say that we have implemented, in success factors, we've implemented all of the modules of success factors. So Sunam currently is in a very fortunate position to have data in every single part of the life cycle. Now think about the beauty of that. We start to look at what's happening in recruitment to understand what we need to do in succession. From succession, we pull data to get to recruitment. We look at our compensation model and say, how is that supporting to be able to support people from a succession perspective? Is it relevant? Is it necessary? Do we need to change anything? We also want to um, share with you today, um, particularly for the South African context, you know that there is a lot specifically around regulatory reporting. We've been working with a very complex case study of bringing together 50 different data sources so that we, taking from a six-week period that it took us for our size of our organization to submit our annual training report, our workplace skills plan, all of our empowered reporting with a click of a button. So therefore, we really would like for all of you to engage with us. I know questions at the end, but to enjoy. So when we kick off with the first kind of like few minutes, it's to introduce us as a team. What you will pick up in that video is the collaboration. During the two days that we've been here together, you'll recall they spoke about culture, the importance of culture, having the right people, having the right people with the right mindset. And so you'll see in that video how it comes to the full systems, processes, tech is one thing, but you need a team that drives this, that's got the passion for this, and that really is prepared to stay the course. You'll also see in here things that you'll remember from the early days. Remember those days? And that's our problem statement. Line manager asking for, can I get the following data? Yes, I can send you an encrypted Excel spreadsheet. It's going to take about five days. Then we're going to have to clean the data. And then maybe eventually, you, can, you, you basically would be the position to put that into a dashboard of some sorts. We're going to show you how we've turned that into a total self-help for our line managers in my workspace, so please do enjoy.
do not think about your architecture from a job architecture perspective up front. If you do not think around Employee Central and how all your fields will be integrated into the different modules, you will find yourself redoing. Take the time beforehand. Think about your architecture from a business perspective before you even look at the system and then utilize the system accordingly. Then with regards to efficiencies and improved employee experience, the case study that we're going to share with you today, as I said, that process in our organization used to take us to submit empowered reports. It took us six weeks. We're now down one day, push a button, reports are visualized in Power BI, one day to submit to the regulatory, down from a six-week period to two days. I always put up this slide. This is a slide that I put up from SAP the very time we presented in 2018. And we said this is where we would like to get to. And I'm happy to say today we're there. We're starting to work on our first predictive at this point in time. We really want to present next year on what this predictive work is that we are doing. But my message here, as you can see clearly, <laughs> it's a marathon, not a sprint. And one of the big things that you find when people kind of like hear these presentations is people think, you know, I want to get there and the tools are available and we're going to do it. The amount of work that goes into data, standard reporting, advanced reporting, advanced analytics, I can tell you today from us living that it is, it is a long road. It is tough. It is relentless data integrity, relentless data validation, relentless looking at your ETL processes, relentless around investigating business questions. Is it related to that? And so hence, it is an incredibly rewarding journey. But let's always understand that we started in 2018. We had some of these components. We're now in the year 2023, and we're now playing within advanced, predictive, and some generative work. And we understand that that's not going to be the same for everybody. But the message is to understand the amount of work that goes into that, the collaboration from a team perspective, and the absolute perseverance that you require for this journey, we do not want people to underestimate because we've experienced that. Okay, so what are the tools that we have used? So we basically have spoken about the fact that success factors, also then um, optimizing the metadata framework, that what we basically have got is bringing everybody into success factors, we also have got Qualtrics as well as Skillsoft, so other third-party systems as well. And then you can see over here is our MariaDB. So we currently are taking all of the data into this MariaDB. We do all of the transformations within that particular area. And then we obviously from there take it with some Python scripts and everything that happens here we take it into Power BI and into SAC. So we will be changing some of these components going forward, potentially also going the HANA route, but that right now is what you have done. So again, the reason why I wanna make that point is to say sometimes you wanna move fast to get to what I've shown you with that people landings page because the value that we're getting from business is far more because they can see it. They've got access. Did we have the perfect environment necessarily over here? No, there's things that we can tweak. But did we address the business pain point? Yes, we did. And that's my message again today, is be clever around where you've got to wait, to have it perfect, and be clever to know where am I get, 
kind of get kind of like the best bang for my buck by sometimes going with a different route, but ultimately it's going to take you to the same place. So right now, what you can see on this slide over here, and really as Sunlam, one of the reasons why we believe we have been so successful with our implementations, with all of our pain points, like all of you, is the fact that we had not only SAP, AXUC, our implementation partners, but we had many people sitting in this room. And the reason why I say that is because by us collaborating with Discovery, Capitec, ShopRite, Goldfields, Anglo, and the list continues, Toyota, we could learn from our peers. Do not go on this journey by yourselves. Reach out to others because you learn and you basically move on this journey far quicker by collaborating out there with others. So we definitely have found that. So just so that you can get an idea, they, there you will see is the landing page. The landing page basically contains all of the various different dashboards that we have got. Let me give an example. So if our CEO at the moment wants to know how many successes he has got across the entire Sunam organization, he wants to know at what readiness level, he wants to know who of them potentially are going to retire in the next few years. He wants to know how many of those individuals we have promoted internally into positions. He wants to know from us how many of those people have we seen that have not had any development, any promotions, or even from a compensation perspective are not where they should be. We can give it to him instantaneously. And that's where we will then continue with our predictive work as to start saying, we have seen from our termination information, because we run it through Qualtrics that you'll see over there, we run basically on a continuous basis sentiment analysis now with our employees. So what we pick up from our termination information, we then take back and we say, with all of these people that left us, do we see a correlation? and start then from there with our predictive work as to who do, who do we believe is going to be next. But what we also do is to say we sometimes think that we need, only need to worry about development. But what we have seen, many factors that we didn't even think about potentially are reasons for those terminations. So we run an organizational effectiveness employee experience score, and that is run it's integrated with success factors. When people are terminated, they get a survey. When people are on first day of onboarding, 30 day, 60 day, 90 day, we check in. So what we do is the passage talk and the grapevine talk of gut feel we have now brought into the room with continuously hearing from these people. So therefore, in every single one of our life cycle points, if you want to ask us from a recruitment perspective, how do you think your recruitment model needs to change tomorrow? We'll tell you. Because we know that our highest volume recruitment right now is specifically in administration. Then we look at the administration model and we go, hmm, we're still trying to fit kind of like a similar type of pattern in recruitment into what is highly operational, but it doesn't require that. How do we change that model? So right now we're busy changing operating models as a result of what we're seeing in the data. So therefore, very, very important is that beauty. And the big component that I just want to stress over here is with that landing page is education. We run demos with all of these individuals, but the availability helps people to be able to understand what is the dashboard about, what is it linked to, and of course, it is easily available. So therefore, what are those kind of like key lessons that we have learned so far on this journey? There's always those, those lessons before I hand over to Pranishi just on the case study. 
is that data is your biggest friend, but it can also be your biggest enemy. So we all know that. The reason we, I just want to take it slightly further, is not just from an integrity perspective, but very importantly, is also when you have data, be discreet around your business problems that you want to solve. Because just pushing out data in dashboards for the sake of pushing it out is not necessarily answering your key kind of like business um, issues that you're struggling with. Solve business problems, we've spoken about that. Change the mindset of line managers and human capital. And very important here is that transparency point. We battled. And why did we battle? Because now we're not only starting to expose things that in the past were more challenging to expose, but we're also preventing them from manipulating data when it gets to visualization. In the past, they could. Now we say, uh-uh, this is your source system. We're turning that tap off. If your data in source system is not correct, you will not change anything at a visualization level. Huge shift for people. Because in the past, they could say, the data is wrong. We say, well, if the data is wrong, ask your people why the data is wrong, because they're capturing it. We say, OK, now that you've fixed the data on the system, you cannot go and manipulate it at that later point. And that is a huge transition, but a very powerful transition for you to have. Also in the transparency of the data is we're starting to expose things now like gender-based pay. We're starting to expose things like, for example, ethnicity-related pay differences, etc. These are tough conversations, but when backed with proper data, it can then turn into actionable insights that can be very powerful for people. It's not only about the numbers. I told you we've got Qualtrics, so it's qualitative. Technical landscape is important, but very much so is collaboration. Tech is not going to land you in a situation where you get to this point. It's the right people with the right mindset and a collaborative team. We're not there to compete against one another as to who's going to be there first and be the best. It's how do we win as a team to enable this. And that is people that comes from our IT environment, our marketing environment, people analytics environment, tech environment, business process environment, etc. The availability we've spoken about, confidence in people analytics data is the maturity. I've touched on that. Think wider than the silo of people analytics. It's not just about HR data. It is about finance data. It is about sales data. It is about far bigger than just HC data. And then data and calculations library for a single version of the truth. Very important that you keep that updated and always be skeptical. Ask as many questions, but you need a team that's comfortable with that, that is happy to continue to ask all of those questions. So I'm going to hand over to Pranishi now. She's going to take us to this case study that we have spoken about. We thought this case study is very practical for the South African environment and really so that you can see what we have done, but also to understand from the data scientist perspective as to all the various different processes that you had to go through. Thank you, Renal. Um, I was told that I have 10 minutes, so I might go over time. If we don't have time for questions, our emails would be there at the end, so please do contact us. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to be talking about our regulatory reporting process and how it has improved because I was definitely one of the resources on this project. It is the one project I hated the most. Um, it was incredibly <laughs> complex. There were so many files. And when I got to know as a data scientist that there were people with 50 spreadsheets on their laptop and they were copying and pasting data from all of those into one single source. And I thought, didn't you use Python to just append the files? And they asked me, what is that? 
why would you use a snake? So that's where we realized that we really needed to upskill our people and the team in terms of the technology that is available to them. As someone who is in the middle of millennial and Gen Z, I do not want to hear the word manual labor, okay? Everything can be automated. So with the um, regulatory reporting uh, submissions, we are mostly focusing on the FSC and in CETA submissions. And like I've mentioned, this process had been so complex and painful at times. And that was mainly because of the extensive manual intervention involved and so many spreadsheets. Now, I don't have anything against spreadsheets, okay? It's been around for decades, it works sometimes, but when dealing with data in the more modern context, it can often lead to inaccurate reporting, misinterpretation of information. There's so much of threats and risks around keeping data in a layer that is unpredictable and unsecure, which essentially leads to um, bad integrity of our data, which we don't want. Um, so basically, in the people analytics team, we really wanted to push innovation and the uses of technology and tools to help create a smoother and more efficient process for the people actually in this process. The focus was to make sure that it was easier for them, that they weren't complaining about it all the time, that it was easy so that they had time to do other work in operations. So as this data universe sort of expanded, we did recognize the need to use these tools and we have been using success factors and specifically in this case, the learning management system because a lot of the submissions involve learning data um, in it. So some of the benefits that we've seen, I think one of the biggest one um, is automation and we've seen how much it's helped um, the individuals because we're able to automatically extract, transform and load data from all these different sources. However, I will say that it wasn't easy. It didn't just happen. There were lots of scripts involved. We didn't, the data scientists, we don't know the transformations, etc. So trying to get that information out of business users who don't understand technical stuff was incredibly difficult. And we had to sort of upskill them and find a language that was common so that we could actually get those rules, etc., to build it in because one could not work without the other. Data integration and centralization was also a huge benefit that came out of this process. We, with regulatory reporting, often you have to um, combine data from multiple sources. So we were able to do that. However, once again, we did have problems there because links would break. You are now trying to combine data from all of these different sources with all different data types, so to try and standardize that and then try and figure out, okay, how, how do we link all of this data together? That took a while as well, but we were patient. We knew that it was gonna be okay. We tried to imagine this light at the end of the tunnel and we pushed through. And with having the data centralized, I think it's a huge benefit because like Ronald's mentioned, we then have a single source of the truth, but individuals can access this data in one place at any given time while still maintaining the necessary level of security um, when accessing that, that data through things like role-based permissions. With regards to data quality and accuracy, unfortunately, we aren't part of that 3% that has pristine data. There's always gonna be issues. However, the amount of issues that we have now compared what, to what we did when we started off, it's been a huge improvement because with data analytics tools, you're able to build in functionalities to detect and handle inconsistencies, missing data, et cetera. So, um, in the LMS system, I know as well, when you capture data, there's now mandatory fields that need to be populated. And in the regulatory reporting process, it's so important to have that because when, for example, you want to submit an empowered report, if you don't have certain information in your submission, it basically rejects that. So in order to overcome that, we make sure that we can also have information that needs to be populated actually being populated. In terms of scalability, now, 
I don't know if anyone has worked with large volumes of data in spreadsheets. However, the performance is always, always slow when you're working with a lot of data, if you're trying to perform different formulas, et cetera, on top of that. And it can really be so frustrating and it takes a lot of time. However, with moving your data or our data into databases, we're able to query data quicker. There isn't any performance issues. Now, I'm not saying there isn't any. Sometimes applications, you know, they do bomb out. But it's not nearly as much as when we used to work with spreadsheets. So that's been um, a huge benefit as well because we're able to now meet our regulatory reporting um, deadlines. With data analytics, we can also create sort of order trails and version control, which we couldn't with, with spreadsheets. And this allows us to track any changes that made, uh, that's made. We can also look at our historical data and ensure compliance with um, regulatory requirements. Now, one of my favorite things that came out of this process, which we didn't have before, was our advanced analysis capabilities. It is so much easier to analyze a graph then look at a spreadsheet and look at information and you're not going to know what is what is what is actually the outcome of this so that's been a huge benefit through visualization and statistical analysis and as Renal said we are going into the predictive world now which is fantastic so we are using power bi um, as our reporting tool but we do also use report story um, and it's benefited us in the fact that it's real-time data and our role-based permissions are also maintained um, on that. So obviously with um, data analysis and analytics and dashboards, et cetera, you're able to gain deeper insight into the data. So we're not just doing this whole project for the submission at the end of the day. We're also able to report on all of our learning data, look at areas of, of improvement, look at trends in what people are learning, look at diversity and de demographics as well. So that's also been a great thing in terms of that. With the learning management um, system that's in success, success factors, we're really trying to use that to promote self-help. So line managers, they can assign various uh, learning and development opportunities to employees. Uh, human capital can also put vital training in there. But I think what's most important is that employees themselves can take ownership of their learning and development. They can go into that system. They can basically go to a search box. There's a library of different trainings that we have. It's free to them. So they can go and access that. They can look at trainings. They can access it themselves. They can undertake that trainings. Everything is saved. Everything is captured automatically, available for our learning data as well. So that's also been something that we've really been pushing to empower people to just take that um, in their own hands. So again, on that learning management system, uh, with systems and technology and anything that's new, we do find that people struggle with new interfaces and just something that's new. So what we've done is we've embedded the learning management system with various links to videos and tutorials to help, in, to help the users navigate the system without having to go there and guess what to do because then we're not gonna get adoption. We're also on that landing page going to have a page specifically on how to guides to further drive this. Um, okay, looks like I'm out of time. <laughs> So there has been a huge shift, as, as Ronal has mentioned. There's been so many pain points. The manipulation of data is something that we do not allow anymore because we really do want to represent the true data because that's how decisions should be made based on what's actually there. Change can be slightly uncomfortable, and we've tried to manage this with a lot of training and communication and patience, and I think it can be uncomfortable change, however, it can also be made easy and also exciting with relevant support, with understanding, with patience, and that's really how we've managed it. And we've tried to push the notion of working smarter rather than harder. So over here is one of the empowered reports. So this, yes, I know it just looks like a table, <laughs> but this is actually the exact format that is required for these submissions. So what the individuals who actually submit this just have to download this and they can sub submit it. So once again, push up a button, there's filters available for them to look specifically at different things. 
Thank you. Yes, I know. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. The complexity that has gone into something like that, the benefit from a six week to a one day, I mean, and the same with immediately we can see all of our costs across the organization. So very quickly then in closing to all of you is to say that this is a tough journey, but a worthwhile journey. We went through success factors, the implementation of success factors. You go through that pain, you will get incredible data. You'll get incredible data to be able to empower for effective decision making. And that really puts human capital as a strategic partner. The strategic partner that we can be because we can influence it from a data perspective as much as any of the other areas. Thanks, everybody. I don't know if there's a quick question. I know we're out of time, but thank you very much. Thank you.